Let us discuss about loops now. In this video, you will learn what loops are for, when to use which kind of loop, how to use them in Python, and what can be accomplished by nesting loops within other loops. Simply put, loops allow you to repeat an action many times without having to write a line of code over and over again. Let's say you want to give yourself 4 apples. The simplest way to do this is to add 1 to your apples variable and then paste that line of code 3 more times. This seems alright right now, but it becomes really hard to manage when you want to do a task hundreds of times. A more efficient way to do this is with a for loop. As you can see, it takes just two lines of code to do something x times compared to x lines of code. We will get back to how this works very soon. Although it is not particularly optimal in this scenario, we can also use what's known as a while loop to accomplish the same goal. Now that you know what a loop is, here's the first type of loop, the while loop. A while loop has two parts, the condition and the conditional code that it contains. The condition takes the form of a boolean. A while loop only executes its code while the condition is true. If the condition becomes wrong before any instance of the loop, the program will pass to the line immediately following the loop. One thing you should know about Python is that it handles blocks of code differently from Java, C++ or JavaScript. Instead of wrapping curly brackets around the code you want to include in the loop, all the statements with the same level of indent are considered to be part of a single block of code. As mentioned earlier, while loops will only execute their inner condition while a condition is met. Unfortunately, this comes with one setback for a novice programmer. If the condition is always met and has no opportunity to become false, the program will repeat the loop infinitely. There are two ways around this issue though and that's what we'll be talking about in this segment. Solution 1. Add a break statement. When Python reads this statement inside the loop, it will immediately break out of the loop. Solution 2. Alter a variable involved with the condition inside the conditional code itself. It sounds tricky but what it means is that if you need a loop to run as long as a variable a is not equal to the variable b, then you need to make it possible for a to share the same value as b somehow. Before moving on to for loops, we will need to understand what an iterable is. I hope you are paying attention because this is where things get tricky. In Python, iterables are objects which can be treated as sequences such as lists arrays and range objects. The form of iterable you'll be learning today is the range object. Each range object contains a list of integers, from least to greatest, that span from a starting value to the stopping value minus 1, increasing or decreasing by the set number each time. It's quite simple to create a range object with a given size. Here, I have set up three different range objects. The first is a simple list, 5 integers long. If you are not familiar with the zero indexed lists, Python, like many other programming languages, starts counting from zero instead of one. That being said, this range starts at zero and keeps counting up until it has filled a list that's the preferred size. Second is a slightly more interesting list. It starts at five and counts upwards but stops right before it reaches 10. Up until the third, you have seen ascending lists. Here's one that descends. As you see, it starts at 10 but increases by negative 2 each time and stops just before its value would be equal to or less than 5. Now that you know what iterables are, it should be easy from here. Alright, for loops are different from while loops in that they don't need to be true to run. All you need is a defined iterable, whether it be a list, array or range object, and you can create your own loop. Creating a for loop is quite simple. When y is the iterable you would like to count over, and x is what you would like to call the specific object in y, all you need to type is for x in y, a colon, then your set. Now, some tasks will require a loop within a loop, like printing out a multiplication table. Nested loops use the same logic as regular loops. What's new here is that, instead of simply performing an action, the outer loop runs an inner loop every iteration. Nested loops are not limited to two loops though. You can have as many loops within loops as you want. 
they are also not limited to the same kind of loop. In game development, it is common for a main while loop to surround the core aspects of the game, with many different for loops running separate processes. This technique allows for more complex applications such as manipulating multidimensional lists and sorting multiple lists.